Well, let me minister to you. By the way, these are not opening remarks. I'm actually preaching right now. <laughs> this is the sermon. Pastor was talking to me, and I said, why don't you get involved in the tent crusade and invite your people to come? He said, I would, but I'm afraid of losing them to the other churches that are going to be there. So he didn't want to expose his people to other congregations. I, and his fear was that he would lose them. And I looked him right in the eye and I said, that's the quickest way to lose them. Because if you say, I'm not going, and believe it or not, there was a pastor in Batavia that preached an entire sermon on, entitled, these are seven reasons for you not to go to the tent crusade with Mario Murillo. And they all went. They all went. I said, you just got to realize that the best way to hold on to your people is to release them. I'm going to try this side over here. I said the best way to hold on to your people is to release. Say amen. Uh, you're right. Isn't that right? That's it. I want to read a verse and tell you how to torture the devil in the beginning. That's my first point. The devil is afraid of something that might happen in the next five minutes that is even more important than the bodies being healed. See, there's a man up there with heart disease, and God's going to heal him. He has neuropathy in his feet. He has heart disease. He's going to be healed. I'm looking right down here. There's a woman that has pain on the side of her jaw, migraine headaches, neck pain that's horrible, She's going to be healed. Now, but I'm not as interested in this moment of those two miracles as I am the word of the Lord, which is going to create thousands of healings. I'm going to try this side again. Thousands of healings. Thousands. How many of you want many healings? Mighty healings. Lasting healing. Well, here it comes. As long as you're a spectator, the devil is safe. As long as we can believe that there are a handful of people that God will use supernaturally, the devil's work is easy. But if all of a sudden, everyone in this room was anointed in healing to lay hands on the sick, we would immediately divide the demonic forces. Instead of picking on me and picking on them, he, he's going, I don't even know who to pick on anymore. There might be a housewife over here, a teacher over there. There's a weapon everywhere. They might be at the store. They might be at the library. They may be absolutely lethal any time of day. So here's what Satan doesn't want. He does not want the anointing to jump from this pulpit into your life. But tonight, I'm not going to let it go. I want the anointing of healing to fall on everybody. I want the anointing over there, over here, everywhere. Is anybody with me on that? That's it. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to press in even a little deeper. I saw how you sang. I saw the words you sang. I said, you know what? I can't even scare these people if I wanted to. That's what I love about preaching in this area. I used to preach in New York City a lot. And then I don't know what happened. It, uh, I think a de Blasio or some storm thing. Uh, But I'm going to tell you that I, what I loved about New York is you could just tell the truth. Well, you could, in New Jersey, you just tell the truth. That's it. Why mess around? And I'm not going to. Your people, Psalm 110, verse 3, in the Amplified Version, your people will offer themselves willingly to participate in your battle. 
in the day of your power. I'm going to read it again. Your people will offer themselves willingly to participate in your battle in the day of your power. Now I'm going to tell you, I have only preached in one other church since the beginning of this year. I've been here and I've been in one other church. That's it. That's because I don't go anywhere that God doesn't tell me to go. Why? Why? I don't look at my calendar. I don't look at my budget. I look at my God. And when I look at him, I understand that I'm to go out only at his word. I wait on the Lord. And when he sends me out, I can expect miracles. Tonight, why do I believe that all of heaven is endorsing what I'm preaching? Why do I believe that angels and God and the, the, the Trinity is in heaven braced to bless this one meeting? Because I am here. I want the devil to hear it. I want the demons to hear it. I want the witches, the warlocks, and the in-laws and the outlaw to hear the voice of the man of God. I am here at King of Kings in the will of God. In the, in the will of God. Yeah. And Stop saying revival is coming. Don't say it anymore. I don't want to hear it. I'm tired of it. We need to retire that like the hula hoop. We need to get rid of it like the lava lamp. It's done. It's over. It's like flocked wallpaper. We don't want it. We don't want to see it anymore. Revival is not coming. It's here. It's here. It's here. There are a lot of folks wondering what all these cars are out here. There's folks from your community. They're driving around. You started singing 10 minutes early. A church that starts early? That's like trying to find lips on a chicken. And you know what? As you were getting out of your car, people are wondering what's going on here. They're wondering what's going on because you're excited. These people say, man, I saw people running into church. And then the Bible says, in the day of your power, a willingness to fight God's battles will come. Now, here's what I want you to understand. You are not a housewife, dear. You're not married to a house. You are not the wife of a house. And you, none of you are normal. No, I look here, none of you are normal. You know, normal went out the window about the, the, the second stanza of the first worship chorus. Normal just took wings and went somewhere else. Now we got a bunch of fire-breathing, tongue-talking, blood-bought, Holy ghost filled. Do I need to go on with this or is somebody going to get excited right now? We are the soldiers of the army of the Lord. We are the army of the Lord. Hallelujah. 